Gorilla gave an imperceptible flick of the wrist and a squeeze of the trigger. Foot. The glass on the right disappeared in a hail of shards. The forger flinched and gave out another mew of fear. Monsieur Dumont, why do you resist? You are fast running out of lives. Come, you have a nice life here. Why spoil it for some client that would turn you in at the drop of a hat? Said Gorilla reasonably. All right, all right. I just need time to think. He would have purchased several identities, I would imagine. You have done work for him before. Tall, dark, slim, well-dressed, possibly Spanish or Italian. You know whom I mean, said Gorilla. Yes, I know who you mean. And you are correct. He did visit me recently. I simply forgot. Of course, of course, soothed Gorilla. Don't kid a kidder, he thought. What did he buy from you? Dumont thought for a moment, flicking through his mental catalog of services. There were several sets of passports, six in all, three for himself and three for a business colleague, plus driving licenses and assorted identifications, replied Dumont, the words coming out in rapid succession. Gorilla considered this. He hadn't expected details of the second assassin to fall into his lap also. This could turn out to be an interesting interrogation. Who is he? I know him as Marquez. Only that, I swear. Gorilla considered that possibility and reasoned that it seemed the most likely. All right. I assume that you have the details of the false ID on file somewhere. Say here in your private office. Dumont shook his head. Alas, I do not keep copies or details of private clients. I fought. The explosion between Dumont's legs made the base of the wine goblet shatter and sent the bowl spinning up into the air before landing on his lap. A smoking hole had miraculously appeared where the bullet had blasted through the velvet cushion. The noise this time from Dumont was not a mew, but a full-on scream of terror. I'm getting quite good at this, Monsieur Dumont. Unfortunately for you, we are out of glasses. Gorilla looked at him hard. The next shot means that our conversation will be over, permanently, and you were doing so well. The Belgian forger looked down at the smoking bullet hole, his face pale except for the trickle of blood that was streaming down his face. So what now? Torture? You're going to torture me, you pig? Gorilla shook his head. Torture? No. Not my style. Not my style at all. It takes too long and is far too noisy. I prefer the more direct approach. Dumont's eyes began to widen, certain that his imminent death was fast approaching. He watched as his tormentor placed the pistol on the table next to him, close at hand, reached inside the bag that he had brought in with him, and withdrew the item that was going to make Jules Dumont, eminent art dealer and forger to the criminal fraternity of Antwerp, sing like a canary. Oh my god, said Dumont, his voice a hoarse whisper. His eyes widened, because there, resting on the table in front of him, and recently removed from the man's Gladstone bag, was the biggest wad of American dollars that the Belgian had seen for a very, very long time. Dumont looked up from the pile of money on the table to the man holding the silenced weapon. He felt the trickle of sweat roll down his upper lip onto his dandyish pencil mustache. You mean you aren't going to kill me? He said. The question held a tone of disbelief, as if this was another trick of the small blonde enforcer. Gorilla looked at him straight in the eye. Well, that very much depends on you, 